Hello everybody, today we're going to be covering the Laravel folder structure. So on the previous episode, we created a new Laravel 9 project using Composer. And this is what we have, right? So I named my folder, uh, my project Tutorial 1. So we see we have a, I have a folder called Tutorial 1 and inside of it I have all the Laravel files and folders. So you should have something similar to what I have here. However, the name of your folder might be different depending on the name of your project. So inside here, we have a bunch of different files that are used by Laravel. And so not every file is as important. So today, in order to kind of save on time, and I'm, I don't want you guys to be confused, I'm only going to be covering the most important folders. And if something isn't that important for beginners, I'm just going to basically quickly go over it. So you just have a general idea, but I'm not going to go that in depth. So I'm going to first start with the files and then we look into the folders. So Right off the bat, uh, we have an editor config folder. This one is not that important, right? It's basically your editor configurations. Next up, we have the .env file. Now, this is a very important file. This is where you store all your uh, environment variables and configurations. And if you guys look at the top, this is we have app name, which is our application name, our environment, which is if it's like local, staging, or production. We have app key. Uh, which is kind of used for encryptions. So we're going to cover this file in detail later on, but this is basically where all your environment variables are stored. And if you come down, like things like your uh, email configurations or your database configurations, all of those are inside this file. Now, uh, we have something called .env.example. As the name suggests, right, the .example, this is an example env file. So you generally, you're just going to be copying that or duplicating this file inside your .env file, right? So uh, this is just to make sure you have the example, right? In case uh, you need it on your .env file. We will cover that later on when we are working with the .env file. And next up, we have the .git, .git attributes and .git ignore. These are related to Git. These are auto-generated when you install Laravel. And the .git ignore, it basically defines the folders and files that shouldn't be stored on your version control, right? Such as your .env file, uh, which is kind of obvious, right? If you have your database information, you don't want to push that to your, you know, GitHub or uh, version control. And a bunch of other files that are not that, that shouldn't be stored on your version control. So these two files, you're not going to be touching them that much unless, you know, you have a special use case. Next up, we have Artisan. Artisan is a tool used to run commands and you know uh, your cli commands right so and laravel ships in with a bunch of useful tools and commands right uh, commands for running uh, for generating boilerplate code all of those uh, is available and we're not going to be touching this artisan file ever i have never worked with directly with this artisan file so it's just here so you can run uh, commands right and that's what we did actually on the previous episode to run our web server right so we used php artisan serve Next up, we have composer.json and composer.lock. Now, if you guys have previously worked with composer, this is very, you know, this is the configuration files for composer. So for now, we're not going to be touching them. Later on, when we get into installing packages, we're going to be using, we might have to work with these files, right? But for now, we don't need to touch them. This is generally managed by composer itself, right? So we don't need to touch them. Next up, we have our package.json file. This is for our NPM, or if we use something like Yarn, it's going to be storing all those dependencies here, right? The next file, which is important, is phpunit.xml. Uh, Laravel ships in with something called phpunit, which is a testing library for uh, PHP. And this is where we store its configuration. For now, you don't need to touch this. By default, it's pretty good. It's going to help you run your tests. So later on, when we cover unit testing and integration testing, we will look more into this file. And the last two files is our readme file and something called wheat, which is a new uh, way of compiling your assets, right? So previously, uh, Laravel shipped in with Webpack and now it's shipping with wheat. And so it's available to basically compile your JavaScript and CSS files, minify them, all that cool stuff you can do with wheat. We may cover that later on for now, for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to be compiling our assets or using anything like any build packages, right? So for now, we're going to be basically uh, using basic HTML, CSS and importing them manually. 
All right, so now that we have covered all the files, let's get into the folders and exactly what each of the folders mean, all right? So let's do that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So from the top, we have the app folder or the application folder, and this is the folder where majority of your PHP code goes, right? So if you're gonna be writing PHP, generally, you're gonna be putting it inside this app folder. Now, inside the app folder, we have a bunch of other folders. And the first one is the console folder. This is where you define your commands. So if you want to create a CLI command, which is basically the, in your terminal, right? Or in your console, you're going to include it here, right? So or if you have a cron job or a scheduler, you're going to define them here. I'm not going to go that in, in depth into it. We will cover that later on. Next up, you have the exceptions folder. This is where you define all your exceptions, right? As the name suggests, or things related to error handling. They go here. Uh, the next folder is actually one of the most important folders. It's the HTTP folder, and this is where you put the logic related to handling your web requests. So if a user goes to a page, basically the code for handling that request is put here, right? So you have your controllers and your middleware here, and Laravel uses the MVC architecture, which is the model view controller. So this is where your controllers go in and as well as your middlewares. If you guys are not familiar with what middlewares are, you don't need to worry about it for now. We will cover that later on in the course, but just know that this is where all your middlewares are included, right? And the kernel.php, this is actually the file that stores your middleware configurations, right? So if you are not familiar with middlewares, you don't need to worry about it for now. We will cover that, all of those later on. So with that being said, let's go to the next folder, which is the models folder. Now, this models folder stores all your models, right? So again, uh, Laravel uses MVC, which is the model view controller architecture or design pattern. And models are a way of interacting with your database or with your data layer. So a model class usually represents a database table. So if you have a user's table, you will also have a user model. And this model is the way you interact with your table. So getting users, updating users, creating users, filtering them, all of that is done through models. And we will have later on cover exactly how to do that, how to create models, how to create tables, all of that cool stuff. The last folder, the providers folder, this is a more advanced folder. So I'm not gonna cover that today. Later on, we will do that. So don't worry about it that much. It's not that important actually. Next up, you have the bootstrap folder. This is actually the folder and it has only one mail file, main file, which is app.php. And it's responsible for initializing your Laravel project. So if you actually look at the code, there's actually a comment called create the application. It just creates a new Laravel application instance. So you don't actually need to edit this file. I have never touched this file over the last few years of using Laravel. So it's not that important. Just know that this is the folder responsible for initializing your Laravel application. And it also has a folder for storing some uh, configuration caches, right? So yeah, all of that. The next folder is the config folder. And as the name suggests, all your application folder configurations are stored inside this folder. So your general application configurations goes inside the app.php such as your application name, if you're in, your, in production or not, if you're in debug mode or not, you know, your time zone, uh, the default locale, you know, for localization, all of those go inside here, right? If you wanna change them, maybe from time zone, you wanna change your time zone from UTC to something else, all inside here. And we have different files for different types of configurations, right? So, you know, we have cache configurations, uh, we have session configurations, mail configurations, and you also can create your own custom configurations if you need to do that. So all of those go inside the config folder. Next folder is a database folder. And as the name suggests, this folder is responsible for all things database. So uh, we have the migrations folder, which is the most important folder. And this is where you define your database schema. So as an example, I'm just going to use the first file, which ships by default by Laravel. And so this is a migration file is used to define the schema for your database. So in Laravel, you don't write any SQL code. You use PHP that is used to generate automatically your SQL code. So, and we're going to cover exactly what migrations are and how they work later on. 
But yeah, you define your migrations or your database schema inside these migration folder. We have two other folders, factories and seeders. These are basically used to create dummy data and populate your database for purpose of testing. Or maybe you have a, like a default user that should always be in your application. You define them here. I'm not going to go that in depth into them because we will have a separate episode for both of these things. And next up is a lang folder. Basically, all your language stuff, if you have localization or translations, go inside a lang folder. Uh, next up is the public folder. The public folder is basically your front facing part of your application. So this is actually the public side that people can access on the internet. So all these other folders, they actually are not directly accessible. So here inside the public folder, we have an index.php. And this is the entry point for your application. All your web requests, all the API requests, all go to this index.php and then index.php decides, okay, you know, this is a request for this, route it to this controller or route it to this PHP file. And we're not going to be touching this PHP file ever, but yeah, this is a very important file, but what all it does is it basically routes the request to the appropriate PHP file, which is behind this public folder, right? Also your assets, all that stuff, they're also going to be here, right? So if you have any CSS, images, logos, all of those, they're going to be inside this public folder. Next up is a resource folder. And as the name suggests, this is where you store all your resources. So your CSS, JavaScript, and HTML files, right? Now, one thing about these files is that they're not publicly accessible if you have correctly set up your uh, mail server. So usually if you have our CSS file here, we need to either copy them through you know, some uh, build libraries such as, such as Webpack or Vite or compile them, right? If you have SAS files, things like that. Or, you know, maybe if you're using React or Vue. So this is basically where we include all our uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? So, and the Vue folder is where we include our HTML, right? Or our uh, page structure, right? So, and Laravel ships in with a welcome.blade.php. And if you open it up, it's like HTML, right? Laravel has uses a templating engine called Blade. We will cover that later on, I think in the next three episodes. So yeah, this is where you include all your HTML. Next folder is the routes folder. And this is where you define all your routes, right? All your accessible URLs. They are all defined inside this folder and there are separate files for different types of routes. So if you have APIs, you define your API routes here. If you have, you know, channels, which we'll cover exactly what that means later on. You don't need to worry about it. You have our console. So this one also, you don't need to worry about it. The only thing which is important for now is the web.php. And this is responsible for your regular web app, web, you know, URLs, right? So if you have, let's say, slash users URL, you're going to just define it inside this file. All right. So main ones to worry about is the web and API. We will cover all of them over, over time, but for now, we're going to be mainly worried about web.php. Next file is the storage folder, and this is the folder responsible for storing files, caches, and sessions. So by default, we have three folders inside of it. App. App is where we store all our files that the users upload. So if user, you know, you want to store users Avatar is stored here. If you want to store Excel sheets or anything, it's basically stored inside this app folder. The next folder is the framework. This is generally where we store or Laravel stores caches and sessions. So if you cache views or anything, it's inside the frameworks folder. We're not going to be working with it that much, but just know that this is where your caches are stored. Next up is the logs folder, and this is where your application logs are stored as well. All right, we have the last two folders. The test folder is where we store all our PHP tests. So, and so if you have unit tests or future tests, they all go inside here. We will have a separate video for testing. And the last one is vendor. And this one is managed by composer. So this is where all your dependencies are stored, right? So, and if you look into it, you know, we have a bunch of PHP frameworks, which are used by Laravel, such as Laravel itself, right? So Laravel is a package as well. It's all stored here. and it's, these are all managed by Composer. So you're never going to be touching this folder or editing it. That's all managed by Composer. Composer is going to update it, install all the packages, all that stuff. So, and that's it, guys. We covered all the folders, generally what they do. We're going to be going more in-depth for throughout 
the course, you know, cover exactly what each of the files mean. And so you don't need to know everything from the start. You're going to learn them as you go along. And I think that's the best way to learn them because at the beginning, it's very easy to get overwhelmed with all the information, right? So yeah, you're going to learn them as you need them. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And I'm going to try to help you guys as much as I can. Have a great day. I'll see you guys on the next episode.